I'm the least prepared looking person for the office, so. Can we get some flip flop action, please? Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> flip, flip. Okay. Yeah! That's, that's hot. <laughs> Oh, thank you, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. It's really good to be here. It's really good to see a crowd because in this field, it doesn't necessarily happen. For instance, six months ago, I did a gig in Christchurch uh, to two people. Yeah. I, 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 what made that worse? It was a panel show. There were seven people on stage. And I don't know if you've ever been to a comedy show where the audience is outnumbered by the acts by over 300%. But it's pretty fucking awkward. And those two people were my first ever girlfriend from when I was 11 years old <laughs> and her husband. <laughs> and there was this beautiful moment where she looked at me and then looked at her husband and this look of, yeah, I made the right decision. <laughs> it just washed over her face. So it's good to be here. Um, so I, I, I'm Samoan. And I... I realise that in this very white light, that's a bold statement for me to be making. Um, uh, what I like to tell people is I didn't get any of the bigness or the dark skin. What I got was the inability to grow proper facial hair <laughs> or hold down a job. <laughs> now, it's fine to laugh, guys. It's fine. I am actually someone. It's fine to laugh at that joke. It's fine. I feel like I got a stress. I am actually someone. It's not a thing I'm just saying. <laughs> like, you're looking at me going like, ugh. Can he say that? I can barely tell, out, tell where his t-shirt ends and his skin begins. Like, is he, is he allowed to say that? Um, what else is happening? Oh, my brother's just had a baby. Yay! It was unplanned. Yay! I said that in Napier a couple of weeks ago and the lady who was sitting about where you are uh, turned to her friend and said, you, you can plan a baby? <laughs> Love Napier, it's a beautiful place. Uh, thriving population. No, it's, um, uh, it's cool, but my nephew's being brought up in England, uh, so I'm not going to be able to be there to help him impart uncle advice, you know? And I really want to be part of that. Uh, so what I've done is I've made some concise ways to teach him what I want him to learn about 2017. And what better way to teach a child about that but via nursery rhymes? So I thought I'd share a few of these with you tonight. How, do you, how does that sound? Good, thank you. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack was paid significantly more and put in charge, even though Jill was more skilled and qualified. <laughs> London bridges burning down, burning down. Lol. <laughs> That's where the line is, fuck. <laughs> Strap in. Row, row, row your boat gently out to sea. Try and avoid Australia. They don't like boat people. <laughs> Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, they had crippling and insurmountable debt. E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> With some bad financial decisions over here and a drought over here. Old MacDonald had a farm. <laughs> but yeah, I think he's going to learn a lot. I think he's going to learn it. But the best part for me is, um, uh, I, uh, I just overheard a phone call the other day between my mum and my brother where he said, um, oh, we're thinking about waiting until he shows a bit of a personality before we name him. Which is a weird concept, I, I think. It's a weird concept, but I think it's fine. They just need to take it one step further and wait till they show personalities first. <laughs> no, 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 fuck off. They're 21 years old, and their top name choice for their child, their child, not their dog, their child, is Axel. Yeah, Axel. That gives your child two job opportunities for the rest of his life. Car mechanic or car thief. Two jobs, two jobs, that's all he can do for the rest of his life. I, I did actually want it to be Axel purely for an anthropological reason because as I said he's been brought up in England and I just wanted to see how long it took him to migrate to the hut. <laughs> but I did, I, I, had to get on, I, tried, I had to try and get on board, I had to try and get on board. So I t said to my brother Tom, 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 a fucking normal name, Tom. <laughs> uh, yeah, fair enough, parents dropped the ball with Rian. Um, which means magical maiden in Welsh. 
But um, no, I, 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 so I said to my brother Tom, Tom, um, I didn't realise you're such a big Guns N' Roses fan. To which he replied, do Guns N' Roses have a song called Axel? And you know it made me child of the Axel Rose. What the fuck are you doing? Calling your kid Axel and not after Axel Rose is like calling kids Slash because you really like punctuation. <laughs> Ridiculous. What else has been going on? Oh, oh I recently, I recently turned 26. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I find, I find birthdays to be a bit difficult though. I find them to be a bit difficult. Uh, I get a bit of PTSD around them, um, mainly because growing up my dad never got me a present. No, 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 it's, uh, sorry. Uh, you, look, you look so upset by that. The five-year-old looks so upset by that. <laughs> you better be getting him presents. Um, I know, I know it's fine. Genuinely, it's fine, mate. It's fine, it's fine. He's, he was just not a materialistic gay, a guy. He provided... <laughs> materialistic guy. Um, no, he preferred games. He preferred games. Games was his forte. That was his forte. Um, hide and go seek was his best. Uh, 21 years. Um, it's a pretty good record, I think. No, guys, he was a gaming prodigy, because whilst he was playing that epic game of Hide and Go Seek with me, he was also playing a really solid game of Go Home, Stay Home with the Department of Corrections. <laughs> and that was after he got his top score in Grand Theft Auto, so uh, doing pretty well for himself. Um, so I did those jokes about six months ago in Auckland, and uh, um, he came to the show. And it was the fourth time we've ever met. And the other piece of information you need to know is that he's ex-Mungrel Mop. <laughs> And I get to those jokes in my set, and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. and then my brain goes, hey, Ryan, remember how your dad's ex-mongrel mob? These probably weren't your best jokes. This wasn't your best idea. And so I'm like, oh, I'm a bit nervous, I'm a bit nervous, because um, I finish the set, and I get off stage, and he is waiting for me. <laughs> and he does the most Samoan thing I've ever seen anyone do, because he does this. Oh, holy shit, my life, my life genuinely flashed up, uh, across my eyes. Um, ironic, because he wasn't in it there either. Um, <laughs> hey guys, you guys have been lovely. Thank you very much. Have a great night. You used to be a professional, a professional poker, poker player. player. Yeah, that's the next show. It's about being a professional poker player. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. You lost two and a half grand. Yeah, lost two and a half grand. Uh, in Vegas, uh, not playing poker uh, or gambling in any way. Uh, well, kind of gambling, gambling more with my life uh, by getting into a limousine with people I didn't know and then roofing me. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I uh, waking up uh, outside my uh, very kindly outside my hotel. I think that was a very really nice, nice touch. I nice think touch. if you've got, if it's got a, yeah. I think it's a classy way to roofie someone. <laughs> I'd give it a six out of ten in terms of a kidnapping and roofie moment. Uh, it's a six. It's a solid six. It was above. It was, it was above average. Yeah.